it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful tutti fruity beach wrap. This is such a fun project using really fun, summery looking yarn. And I recently did a Yarn 101 on this yarn. This is the new Red Heart Super Saver Stripes. So check out my Yarn 101 if you're not familiar with this yarn. But it is a self-striping yarn, eliminating the need to join different colors as you go. And it is very fun for summertime. This is a wrap that you can wear at the pool or the beach and wrap it around yourself to give you a little bit more coverage while you're wearing a bathing suit or what have you. And basically, we are making a V-stitch triangle. And it's a big triangle, and then we've added, I've added some ties at the top to kind of hold it on. Now, you can wear this kind of around your hips, like a sarong, sort of, like a more traditional cover-up. Or you can uh, wear this around your shoulders and tie it to kind of make a shawl if you need more upper body coverage or wear it different ways. So hop on over to the Fiberflux blog and you can see all the photos that I have on the written pattern of how to style this in different ways. The finished piece is about 42 inches across the top edge and each side down each edge is 34 inches and each one of these ties is each one of these is 18 inches and this one is 18 inches long. However, as we go through the video, I'm gonna show you ways to customize this wrap. Now, I did have some yarn left over from when I made this. So you will have yarn if you want to make yours wider or longer. And also, if you need to make your ties a bit longer as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is helpful to measure as you go along, the hook we'll be using is a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook and your yarn. I'm going to be using a new yarn called Red Heart Super Saver Stripes. Now, if you follow this channel, you'll know I use Super Saver yarn all the time, but this is a new one called Stripes. It's a self-striping yarn you can see in this scarf here. And um, the color is called Fruity Stripe. It's like shades of neon if you are after the same color. I thought it'd be fun for you know summer and, and beach wear. Each one of these balls of yarn is 236 yards, and I'll be using two of them. So if you'd like to substitute yarn, look on the yarn label for a medium or a four on the yarn weight scale, and something that recommends the 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook to substitute. Okay, so to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Next, we're going to chain seven. So our beach wrap will be a triangle. We'll work from the bottom and work our way upward and outward and finally make the tie that goes across the top of it, okay? So we're gonna start with that bottom point first. So what we wanna do is chain seven. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this will be the bottom. We'll be working our first V's. This will be a simple V stitch. So what we want to do next is in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So we're going to go one, two, three, and four. This fourth chain from our hook, we're going to work our first V. So work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that, into that fourth chain from the hook. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Then we're going to chain one, and then in that same chain work a double crochet. Okay, so we'll have our first V of our row. Then what we're gonna do is skip two chains, one, two, and in this last chain here, we're gonna work another V, okay? So work a double crochet, then a chain one, and then a double crochet, all in that same chain. Now this tail here, we'll worry about that later. When we're done, we'll just weave that in. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn. I'm really excited about these color changes. Right now we have this really bright purple. Okay, so for row two, what we're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three, and then we're gonna turn our work. 
So from this point forward, we're going to be working into the center of each V. So here we have a, our first V of our row. So we're going to work a V into the center of that V. So you see how you can see the post here, the post here, and then there's a space in between. Work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the center of that V. So our V's will be stacked, okay? So double crochet, chain one, and double crochet, all in the center of that first V that you come to of the row. Okay? Hop on over to the next V. So here was our first one. This is our next one, center of the V, and we're going to work a V into the center of that V as well. So once again, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Just like that, okay? Now we have a one of my yarn is has a mind of its own over here. Now, this is where the magic happens. If you were to just work a double crochet to finish off the row, you'd get a strip. But we want to work outward like a triangle. So what we're going to do in this turning chain space, so this last V that we worked into, right next to it you'll have your turning chain and a space in there. You're going to work a V into that turning chain space and that's when it, what's going to give us this triangular shape that we're after. Okay, so once more work a V into the center of that turning chain space. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now you'll need to work a few rows before you really start to see it becoming a triangle, but you can already tell that it's at least expanding. So what we're going to do for the rest of our triangle is the first part of our wrap. Um, we're going to be making this triangle shape. So the row that we just did, row two, you're going to repeat that over and over and over again until your triangle is um, larger and has the ability uh, to cover. Right now it's a little bit small. So let's work the next row together. We're simply going to be repeating row two. I'll, I'll repeat this row with you once or twice just to you know get us going. So what you're going to do is chain three one more time. One, two, three. Turn your work. Now see this uh, first V here? Work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that first V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Locate the next V of your row, which is right here, and do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, hop over to the next V, and in that center of that V, that chain one space, work another V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Each row is the same, but because we're increasing, you'll work an extra V each time. Okay, and now we're at the turning chain space already, so just do the same exact thing we did before. Work your double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that turning chain space. And as you can see already, we're getting a nice triangle shape already, okay? Let's do one more row together before we move on. Chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. And then in that first V that you come to, that very first one, work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Very first V that you come to. Hop over to the next V and work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. The next V, do the same thing. Work a V into the next V. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Let me get a little bit more yarn. And hop to the next V, which is right here. We're gonna work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. We're simply repeating row two over and over again. Now we're at our turning chain space. So once again, work a V into that turning chain space, double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the center of that V or that turning chain space, excuse me. All right, so let's look at what we have here. We are starting, let me remove my hook. We are starting to get a nice lacy triangle, okay? So what you're going to do, now we repeated row two a couple times just to show you how it grows. It's going to grow 
outward and upward, the more rows that you work. So keep repeating row two over and over and over until your triangle has grown. We're gonna rejoin in just a moment and I'm gonna show you how to transition from our triangle to the, the strip or the tie that's going to enable you to tie this on, okay? So just keep repeating row two and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, so I continued working my rows and now I'm just gonna finish up this very last row of the triangle part of our cover-up. So I'm just working a V right into that turning chain space. Same thing we've been doing. And so let me show you what I have so far. So I continued until I got quite a bit of height and width on my triangle. Now as a side note, uh, you could totally just stop right here and make this a little shawlette and it would be very cute. But the uh, Red Heart stripes that we're using uh, makes for a really interesting triangle shape with the display of colors. So let's move on next to the tie part. Now our triangle is sized, um, it can be custom sized. So what you wanna do is if you want to have more coverage on your wrap, you can simply keep working more rows. Now I worked mine until the top edge up here of my triangle is 42 inches long. And then each side of my triangle when it comes down is about 34 inches long. If you're making this for a child, just uh, make your triangle a little bit smaller. And if you want more coverage or for a taller person or if you need it to be bigger, um, just simply work more rows. Now as you work more rows, it will grow in height but also in width. So if you want it to be wider, it's gonna be longer. If you want it to be longer, it's also gonna be wider. That's just how the triangle grows. But I'm gonna stop right here and show you how to do the tie part. It's very, very simple. So what we're gonna do is grab our hook and I just wanted to point out, now earlier I mentioned we're gonna be using two skeins of the yarn. I still have uh, a good amount left. So you can get this uh, bigger if you like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin the uh, tie part. Now we're gonna come out and make a chain way out in the side here and then come back in with double crochet stitches, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, I'm gonna make each one of my ties 18 inches beyond my triangle. So what we're gonna do is make a, tr a chain that's 18 inches long. Now I'm gonna also count the chains so I can tell you how many chains in case you wanna know the exact amount of chains. Um, so you know either way. But we're gonna make our chain 18 inches long. So go ahead and start making your chains. Okay, so I ended up working 65 chains to give me approximately 18 inches, and that'll make a nice tie. Um, it'll allow you to tie it in a knot or a small bow as well. So once you have your chains and you get your length, if you want it to be a little longer, simply make more chains. So let's come back in and make our tie part just a little bit thicker. It's a little bit flimsy right now, so we're gonna come back in with some uh, stitches. Okay, so we're gonna have our chain here. Now, in the fourth chain from the hook, see this uh, loop here on the hook does not count. Count one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna work a double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. Let me just slide this back a little bit. Okay, so work a double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook, just like that. And then we're gonna continue across making double crochets in each chain all the way across until we get back to this triangle. And then the triangle, we're also gonna make double crochets, but because we're gonna be working into these V stitches, I'm gonna show you um, how to deal with that part of our tie. So just work all the way across, working your double crochet stitches. I'm gonna continue across here, and then we will rejoin once we get to this end of our chain where our triangle begins, okay? So already we have a nice, wider tie to tie our wrap on. Okay, so I worked my double crochet stitches all the way across that chain, and now we have a nice tie for our wrap. So now we're at the triangle part. I worked all the way across, and now we're at the triangle area. So we're still gonna work double crochet stitches, but I wanted to show you where to place them. So we're at our first double crochet here. We're gonna work a double crochet into that stitch now we're just going from working into chains to working into stitches. 
Then you have the center of your V, and you're going to work a double crochet into the center of the V, and then a double crochet into the next stitch. So we're just working a double crochet into the top of the right side of the V, the space in the center of the V, and the stitch in the left part of the V, all the way across, okay? So hop over to the next V and do the same thing. Work a double crochet in that stitch of the right side of the V here. Work a double crochet in the space into the center of the V. Work a double crochet into the, oh, the, the next stitch, the left part of the V, okay? And then do the same thing in every V across. Work a double crochet into the stitch, a double crochet into the space, and then a double crochet into the stitch. Now let's look at what we have so far. It's creating this solid top part that gives a nice continuation to our tie. Now pretty soon, if we look at our skein of yarn, it'll be changing colors. So it will offer a nice striping as we work our way across. Okay, so let's work into the stitch, then the space, then the stitch of the V. I wanted to point out we're not working anything in between the V's in that space. We're just working in the space of the V, okay? So work into the stitch of the first part of the V, work a double crochet into the center of the V, you get a little bit more yarn here. These center pull balls are really nice uh, when you're working on projects like this where you're using lots of yarn. Okay, so we worked a double crochet in the center of the V and then a double crochet into the stitch of the V on the left side. Work into the right side of that V into the stitch. Work into the space in the center of the V. Work into the stitch on the left side of the V. Okay? We're just repeating this all the way across the top so that it will enable us to tie this on. Once again, if you have changed the size of your triangle, if you've made it larger or smaller, depending on you know, the customization that you're after for your wrap, um, you might have more of these stitches to work into. So make sure if you take this yarn ball down farther, you know, if you use more of the yarn to make it bigger, make sure you reserve uh, enough yarn to work this part of the wrap, okay? The top part. Okay, so I'm just going to work a double crochet into the stitch, the space, and the stitch of each V. If you want to see this slower, just back up to where we began. But I'm going to keep working all the way across, and then we're going to rejoin, and I'm going to show you how to work the next part, the other tie on the other side of your wrap, okay? So once again, we're working into the stitch, that first stitch you come to of the V, the space in the center of the V, and the stitch on the opposite side of the V, okay? So the right stitch of the V, the space of the V, and the left stitch of the V, okay? So just do that all the way across, and then we will rejoin in just a moment when we get towards the end of the top edge of this and I will show you how to work the next tie and then we're going to be finishing our wrap up. Okay, so once you've worked your double crochet stitches all the way across into all of those V's, then just work, see this is our last stitch, that last V of the row, work a double crochet into there. Then this turning chain space, work a double crochet into that as well, okay? So now you have a solid edge that continues with our tie. So let's keep going and make the other tie, and this will be the last part of our project. Okay, so what we're going to do now, remember before we did, uh, we did a 65 chains. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side so that they're approximately the same length. They might be uh, slightly different just because of tension and we're working in a different direction, but they'll be approximately the same length. So go ahead and work your 65 chains. I'm going to go ahead and work mine. And then we're going to rejoin, and I'm going to show you how to work, finish up the tie. 63, 64, and 65. So I made a total of 65 chains, just like we did on the other side. And then, let me just turn this around here. We're going to work into the chains, just like we did before, okay? So in the fourth chain from the hook, same thing, this loop here does not count. Go one, two, three, and four. So in this fourth chain from the hook, work your double crochet, 
just like that. And you notice the colors on this side of the tie are slightly different than the other side. Remember over here we had more of a royal purple. So if you use the Red Heart Super Saver stripes like I did, even in different colorways, you're going to get a blending of colors. So it's going to make an interesting project. Okay, so I'm just going to work a double crochet in each chain across. So go ahead and work your double crochets into the chains and then we'll rejoin once we get back towards the triangle again. And I'm going to show you how to kind of bring all this together and make sense of it and finish off the top. Okay, I'm just coming up to the end here, working that last double crochet in the chain. Now as you come up to the end here, I just want to show you how it's going to look. And this is totally normal. This is what it's supposed to look like. Let me just untwist him a little bit. Okay, so we came in one direction with our project. We went across, we made a chain, and then we came back in this direction. Okay, so when you get back to your triangle, you'll notice that this is sticking up above this. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make that look normal. See, because over here, it was a nice smooth transition because we were just simply going right into those V's down here. But because we went out and came back in, it's going to look like a stair step almost. And that's not really what we want it to look like. So this is what I want you to do. Take your project, see your triangle? This is the top edge of it. Take it and flip it over like this. And then see this space at the end? If you look at the FiberFlux blog, I'm also going to take a photo and draw like an arrow, kind of like a diagram if you want to look at it that way too. But if we look at our triangle, that was the last space we worked that last stitch into. That same space there, right there that you see at the end, right here, insert your hook. We're going to work a slip stitch to bring all this together, okay? So again, we took our triangle and we flipped it over, insert the hook into that space, wrap yarn around hook, Bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the other loop on your hook, and now it looks like one continuous piece, okay? And that's how we're going to finish it up, okay? Now, I'm going to take my hook out and I'm going to show you this one more time. It's a little bit unusual the way I'm doing this, but we don't want our wrap to look like a stair step, okay? So we're just coming across with our double crochet stitches, and here we are at our triangle. Okay, here's our triangle. This is the top edge, and it looks like a set of stairs, not making much sense. So what we're going to do, I'm just showing you this once again. Flip your triangle over so that bottom edge is facing downward now. Now, into that last space of this edge where you worked your last double crochet of the triangle part, insert your hook into that space, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And now it looks like one lovely continuous piece and our wrap is complete, okay? So next we're going to weave the ends in and then we'll be totally done. Okay, so now once we've kind of joined these together, we are ready to do our finish work. So go ahead and cut the yarn, leaving a tail, and take your hook, fasten off, and pull that tight, get that nice and snug. So this will be your end, and then the other end will be where we started. Now I used one and a half uh, skeins of this yarn. Well, a little more than half. One and three quarters. Uh, so I have a little bit of yarn left over. So again, if you want to make yours a little bigger than I did, feel free to do that as well. So let's go ahead and weave our ends in. Now whenever you're using variegated yarn or striped yarn, you want to try and keep your tail colors in the same area. So here I have this bright kind of coral color. Uh, just try and keep it in this area here. Don't go into the other colors because your tail will really stick out and the color will show immediately. So you want to keep your finish work nice and neat. So go one direction with your needle, cut back in the other direction, staying in that kind of bright coral section. All right, then you can trim that yarn and then depending on where you joined your yarn, I've already woven that in, you can join, uh, weave your ends in there. And then you'll have an end down at the bottom, the tip of your bottom part of your triangle. So go ahead and weave the ends in. Now a lot of times when you have ends, 
that uh, at the beginning of a project like this that have kind of been floating all around as you've been working on your project, they can get a little frayed. So if you need to make a fresh cut to kind of get it through that tapestry needle, feel free to do that as well. So this is a very large purple section, so I don't really have to worry about staying in that section so much like I did before. But again, keep the purple in the purple section and it'll look much neater and make your end virtually disappear visually. Okay, so I went in both directions and I'm just going to snip my yarn and then we are finished. So let's open this up and just look at it. We have some beautiful colors. We still have a little bit of yarn left. You could use that for something else, maybe an accessory to go with your wrap. Maybe a little um, bag to keep your keys in or something while you swim or something like that. So... I have the two ties up here and the top, and the photo at the beginning and the end of this video will show you one way to wear your wrap, traditionally around the waist. But be sure and hop over to the Fiberflux blog because I'm going to show you some different ways to style it. You can also wear this around your shoulders if you need some coverage on the top part of your body, or you can wear it uh, kind of around the waist with the tie in the front. So definitely check out the different ways to style this on the Fiberflux blog, and the link will, uh, to the blog will be below as well. So that's it. This is the Tutti Fruity Beach Wrap. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.